This is It's a Dog's Life with Greg Cleva on Sirius XM 110. Sit, Lucy, sit. Good girl. Cooper, don't you dare go up there. Cooper. Milo, be quiet. Stop barking. Milo. It's a Dog's Life is about understanding your dog, how your dog thinks and learns, and why your dog does what he does. So your years together are the best they can be. Now, here's your host, Greg Cleva. Hey, welcome to It's a Dog's Life. I'm your host, Greg Cleva. I'm here to help you out with all of your doggy dilemmas. If you've got questions about your dog's behavior, if you need to know how to address problem behaviors, if you need some training advice, if you need direction on how to best educate your dog, uh, you might need tips on how to care for your dog or keep them safe in general. I got a lot of seasonal tips, all kinds of stuff to make sure that uh, your dog is well cared for. You've come to the right place here. I'm here to help you understand your dog and have the best possible relationship with your pet. A lifetime of fun with Fido, as I like to say. I have a special guest I want to introduce you to. Uh, if you've been a listener to the show for some time, you may recall probably nine months ago or so, we talked about uh, and celebrated the fact that here in New York, Governor Cuomo passed a bill and created the law making it a crime to be a spectator at an animal fight. And this was made possible through the hard work of animal advocates and pet owners from across the state of New York. These are people who kept pressure on their elected officials in the state house to pass this bill into law to protect animals from the, the you know, it's really barbaric cruelty of animal fighting. You know, dog fighting's been in the news. It's existed for a long time, but it's been in the news and highlighted ever since the whole Michael Vick situation. And states are really trying to crack down on this stuff. So this is the kind of stuff that's sitting on legislators' desks all over our country. In the state you're sitting in, you're listening to me right now, I can guarantee there's some kind of bill waiting to be passed that would increase the punishment for animal abusers. Uh, and there was a big push recently here in New Jersey. I think it was to increase the penalty for animal cruelty from a misdemeanor to a felony. Uh, and for a time, it looked like our governor, Chris Christie, was not going to act on the bill. And it got a lot of people upset. Uh, animal advocates, they stepped up across the state and put heavy pressure on them, and it finally did pass. Governor Christie did the right thing. Uh, we've had pet lovers from the state of Ohio on the show to talk about Nitro's Law. You know our friend Nikki Mustaki, who joins me from time to time, talking about Nitro's Law. Uh, again, making animal negle neglect and cruelty a felony with heavy fines, as opposed to you know a misdemeanor and a slap on the wrist. So that's happening in the state of Ohio. This stuff is happening everywhere. And in every case, they need voices. Each one of these needs voices, big voices behind them, a big push from animal advocates. Otherwise, like I said, they sit on legislators' desks and they don't go anywhere. And animals continue to suffer. Uh, so to create more focus in this area of animal advocacy, especially here in the state of New York, last year, New York State Assemblyman Jim Tedesco made history with the first ever New York State Animal Advocacy Day in Albany, in the state's capital. It was June of last year that Tedesco, along with fellow legislators, uh, Republicans and Democrats alike from both sides of the aisle, they got together with law enforcement, animal advocates, and hundreds of pet owners. They joined together to call for the toughest animal cruelty laws in the nation to protect the pets of, of the state of New York. And as Tedesco explains it, most of the, the lobbyists who walk the halls of Albany uh, or of your state capital are paid, but animal advocates are not. They're volunteers. They care about protecting uh, pets. They give their blood, sweat, and tears to do it. Uh, and and they, it's not just about protecting pets. It's about protecting all members of our families. Animal advocacy is purely a, a people and paw-powered event. And one of those people, one of those great animal advocates, is my dear friend Marie Shelto. Marie is owned by another dear friend of mine, uh, a very handsome blonde guy, her sidekick named Bakker the Labradoodle. You're probably familiar with Bakker the Labradoodle. He's a, a very special dog, uh, and Marie is the very special woman behind all of his great work. I'm going to let Marie tell you some of the amazing charitable work that they do together. Um, I refer to Bakker as a reluctant celebrity, uh, and I say that because he seems to prefer spending his time spreading love and just making people happy, making people smile, especially kids. Um, but he's also a star. He appears in print ads and TV commercials. Um, he's in movies. You'll see him in Men in Black 3. You may have seen him in Eat, Pray, Love or War of the Worlds. So uh, he's a celebrity dog. And Marie and Bacher are here to tell us more about New York State's Animal Advocacy Day. 
Marie, welcome to It's a Dog's Life. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Bakker is letting me speak for him right now. He did enough on Facebook today. All right. Very good. I know he's a busy doodle. He is a very, very busy doodle. My, my big buddy's doing well, though. Yes, he is. He's great. You know, he's the gentle giant, and uh, his motto is to lend a helping paw, so that's what he does. And he does that with, uh, with you behind him or beside him all the way, for sure. So um, this New York State Animal Advocacy Day, uh, Marie, I'm really glad that you came on to talk to me about it. I know they hope to strengthen the animal cruelty laws in New York, uh, but this is a message that I think is important for you know anyone listening in any state that they're sitting in. But th th in New York in particular, this is happening around a law that, that already exists, correct? Correct. Uh, we are very, very lucky to have Assemblyman Jim Tedesco. He was the driving force behind all of Buster's law. And what that did, in effect, was uh, create a felony category of aggravated cruelty to animals. And, you know, Buster's Law, people ask, what was it? Who was Buster? And it was an 18-month-old tabby cat that had been doused with kerosene and burned to death by a Schenectady teen in 1997. Yeah, we find a lot, a lot of these uh, laws, I mentioned Nitro's Law in the state of Ohio, a lot of these laws are named for animals that were mistreated right. and, uh, and cruelly treated. And I think what's, in, what's important, and I, I mentioned it there in my opening a little bit, the fact that, you know, th these laws also protect our families. These people that typically commit these kind of crimes, in many, many cases, also commit crimes against humans, violent crimes. And, I, and, and uh, Assemblyman Tedesco makes that point as well. Right, because it seems that the person that was brought up on this charge and years later was brought up on many other charges against not only animals but against humans. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what do animal abusers face as far as penalties in the state of New York now? Well, the penalties now are they're punishable by up to two years in prison and a $5,000 fine. Which is pretty hefty, and again, it's certainly more than the, uh, the slap on the wrist well, that was probably previously when, the, when, the, when it was a simple misdemeanor. Right, exactly. And, you know, hopefully there will be more law, laws passed and tougher ones. That's what we're looking for, for sure. And I know that that's what this New York State Animal Advocacy Day uh, is really meant to, to focus on. Uh, tell us about that. Tell us about the event. What is New York State Animal Advocacy Day? Well, it's a day to bring together animal advocates and the legislatures. What they really want to do is strengthen Buster's Law and also to get bills presented that they could eventually have passed into law. So, you know, this day is very, very important, and, you know, we are obviously the ones who have to speak for the animals. They cannot speak for themselves. And without the support of advocates and people to actually show their report and uh, support, and like you said, step up, we're not going to get anything passed through, and these animals are going to suffer. Yeah, for sure. And now, there are a lot of advocates that are going to be at this event, obviously. This is, I think, this, the second year, right, uh, uh, right. Assemblyman right. Tedesco yes. initiated this last year? Right. Assemblyman Tedesco and Senator Greg Ball, they teamed up last year for the first one. And they're back again as the heads of this one. And we have a lot of, you know, great people that are going to be joining us. Uh, I have to mention Gracie, who is uh, Assemblyman Tedesco's little corgi, who's always out in the spotlight there with him. Okay. Obviously, he's a big dog and animal lover. And uh, again, this year, we have a very well-known person up here, Steve Caparizzo, uh, who is going to be the MC. He is um, known as the WTEN, which is the ABC affiliate up here, uh, meteorologist, but he's best known for being the head of Pet Connection. And oh, okay. he works tirelessly to find homeless animals, their forever home, and he is an incredible human being, and he will be our MC for this event. Uh, we also have some very, very good friends of Bakker that will be coming up, uh, Prince Lorenzo Borghese, who we all know in our circles of uh, the animal world as an entrepreneur and animal advocate. Lorenzo does great work for the animals as well, for sure. Right, and those who don't know him from our circles might know him from Season 9 of The Bachelor. And uh, he will be up there to, you know, lend a hand and support everything that's going on here. And uh, we also have Rescue Inc., who was also here last year, and they'll be joining us again. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, legislators, uh, district attorneys are going to be present and people, you know, to speak out the support that the animals need. I just have to thank two people especially uh, for getting the word out. We have a wonderful radio personality up here, Jamie Roberts, on um, Oldies 98.3. 
and she is always out in front to help the furry friends. And she has been talking about this event every day, and this is the only way we're going to get people up here to support it, by getting the word out. Um, they asked Bacher to help out because he knows a lot of people in New York City. He's got a little exposure. A little exposure. <laughs> and our dear friend Maria Melito, um, she's been helping out quite a bit, spread the word on her station also on Q104. So, you know, it's really, really uh, important to get the word out. And the uh, event is next week, correct? Right. The event is Wednesday, June 13th. It's going to be at the Well of the Legislative Office Building in Albany. It's scheduled to start at 9.30 to 11.30, and uh, after 11.30, uh, people can lobby their legislatures at that point. There will be exhibitors, uh, including Albany County Sh Sheriff's Office, Therapy Dogs International, rescue organizations. Uh, a lot of informational uh, exhibitors are going to be there also. Yeah, I think it's important. You know, Marie, you and Bacher travel around and do a lot of this type of work, and you mentioned some other, um, you know, high-profile people with some exposure who can really get some notice for these types of things. I, I, I want to get the message out there to everybody listening across the country because I think it's so important. Everyone listening, I'm assuming, is an animal lover. Um, certainly, we, you know, we love our dogs. We want to be advocates for the animals in our communities as well. It's probably important for people to kind of research, have some understanding of these types of laws that might be on the books in their particular states and look for these types of events or maybe find a legislator who, uh, assembly person who maybe has a passion for animals, who's, who's uh, got that type of exposure and kind of, you know, maybe suggest to them that they mimic what New York State is doing here and get this kind of uh, awareness or, or look, they, they might have these types of events going on already. They should really reach out and, and see if they've got these things in their areas and try to participate as well, right? That advocacy is so important. Right, right. I mean, uh, we've said it a million times that we are the voices, you know, for our animals. Even though I expect Bacher to talk any moment, I am still his voice. <laughs> I don't it looks like he could of, do that. I don't answer any of his Facebook. Uh, he does all that himself. Um, but like you said before, you know, people have to step up and get involved. You can't just sit back and expect things to happen. There are legislatures, assemblymen, uh, senators out there who maybe deep down are animal lovers, but this is not the first thought on their mind. Right. Uh, we are very, very lucky, you know, to have several people, uh, you know, namely uh, Assemblyman Tedesco, who has really, really pushed forward, uh, you know, with the things that are necessary to be the voice for the animals. For sure. So uh, just in regards to uh, Buster's Law, uh, what additions or changes are being proposed to strengthen that mm -hmm. law or existing laws in the state of New York? Well, like we said, it seems that every day we hear a new case of animal cruelty, abuse, hoarding. Um, they're calling for bipartisan measures to strengthen, strengthen Buster's Law to require that animal abusers be placed on a statewide registry of abusers. That would be this huge to have a, a registry of people that are that are offenders. Yes. Right. Right. You know, I mean, this is a, a very, very big thing. This would pro prohibit them uh, from ever owning a companion animal again. Huh. It would require them to undergo psychiatric evaluation. So, you know, these are important measures, and I, I think this one is uh, is the next to be the very, very big one. Yeah, that's important stuff for sure. I know some of the other stuff that's being advocated for. Uh, or passed in the Senate but haven't been taken up in the Assembly yet are to prohibit the sale um, or, or even the possession of animal fighting paraphernalia, which I think is important, or to make it a felony to steal a pet. Steal a we pet. see that from time to time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this whole thing, Animal Advocacy Day, really what it wants to do is to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the big thing. So without the awareness and the people to get involved, then nothing is going to happen. And how can that happen? How can, in this case, New Yorkers or anyone else listening approach their state legislature? Well, how, can, how can we help ensure that these measures are going to be accepted? You know, it's exactly what you said. They have to step up. They have to write. They have to find out who these people are. If you really care about the animals, you will find out. It's very, very easy in this world of technology to go online and, you know, try to find out different things. And it really takes a phone call, an email, or a letter. Right, to, exactly. To and go to events like this. Show your support. Be the voice for the animals that you sit home and say you are. You have to get out there and do it. 
Well, it sounds like a great event. I'm, I'm glad that you and uh, Bacher will be there representing this the, the state of New York or the, the animals in need for the state of New York. What else has Bacher been up to? I know he's a busy doodle. He's a busy doodle. You know, I, I haven't gone to see Men in Black 3. If he's in it, he's in it for, a, you know, a, a blink of an eye. But if he's there, he's there. Uh, we did do a photo shoot for uh, Martha Stewart products with our little friend Chico. Oh, nice. And, uh, for her pet product line in PetSmart. Yes, yes. Very mm -hmm. good. Yep. And, uh, you know, we've done uh, a few different things like that. He had a, a, a nice write-up in Fido Friendly in the magazine about dogs and showbiz. You know, he's really basing a big part of his life now in his work with kids. And uh, we were very excited to be invited to a number of grade schools for Bacher to sit and read with the children. And uh, one of the big ones was uh, out in uh, Long Island at Parliament Place Elementary School where the kids were chosen from this school to write an article for the Kids Day section of Newsday all about dogs and their hero dogs. And they chose Bacher to be their hero. Their Very hero nice. Dogs. So um, June 17th in Newsday is going to be the article uh, you know, written by these children about Bakker. So we went to the school to visit and uh, read Bakker's book <laughs> with the children. <laughs> and uh, that's what he's really been doing now, going to a lot of libraries, working with children with autism. Uh, he's just so wonderful with children. So to me right now, that's where his efforts are focused. Excellent. Are the kids enjoying the book, Chasing Bakker's Tale, right? Yes, they are. They really are. Bakker has an amazing story to tell, and I'm very proud of the way the, the book turned out. And a whole part of it is in the back is called Lending a Helping Paw. Bakker being so involved with so many rescue organizations, this is a big part of his life also. Uh, we had people make donations to their favorite rescue organization, and we put all the rescue organizations in the back of his book with the links to their website so people, again, could become more aware. Very nice. He's a selfless dog, and you are a selfless woman, Marie. That's amazing work that you do. Well, it's it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like some friends said about him, you know Bakker very well. He never gets his curls in a knot. <laughs> exactly. I've uh, never seen him really get too excited about anything, but deep down inside, I think he really sees what's going on. And, uh, you know, he has his plush toy, which we bring to children in hospitals. And, uh, he just and now with the, with the book and the plush toy, uh, if, if you're, if, uh, I'm, I'm sure I don't need to tell him, but they know this now from hearing you talk about Bacher. If you're selling these things, a, pro, a portion of them mm -hmm. goes to right. charitable we, organizations. We, right. If we're making an appearance for a certain organization, we do it for them. Off his uh, website, we work a lot with Doodle Rescue uh, Collectives, and uh, we get partial proceeds. Uh, from the sale of these items, you know, Great to these stuff. organizations. And, in fact, today, finally, after about six years of me trying to do everything, I had someone uh, help out with his new website. And, oh, t uh, tell us about that. Where can we learn more about? Bacher Labradoodle and all this great work that, that you guys are doing together. Okay, the website is in the same place, www.bacher, B-O-C-K-E-R dot TV, like in television. And the new website was just launched about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and um, if we want to find him on Facebook, I can tell a lot of people have already because the numbers are mounting up. He's got a fan page, which is uh, facebook.com slash Bacher. And his friend page is uh, facebook.com slash Bakker T, and the T stands for The Labradoodle. <laughs> All right, very good. And he's also on Twitter, of course. And what's his Twitter uh, handle? Where can we find him? At Bakker. <laughs> At oh. Bakker. I should have known. You should have known. So, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a blessing, and uh, he's here for a reason, and I'm just glad that he can make people smile. Very, very nice. Just real quick before I let you go, Marie, where can we learn more about the New York State Animal Advocacy Day? It's basically from their Facebook page, which is not, which is not set up as an event. It's set up as a page that's going to be there all the time with updates, and it's facebook.com slash NY, as in New York, S, State, Animal Advocacy Day. We'll put all that on Bacher's Facebook page, on his fan page, and his friend page, and it's on his website also. Um, but the page will be there all the time, and it will be updated, and hopefully we'll get more of these bills passed into law. Very good. Great work again. And, uh, and I, I can't uh, – I would love to hear from my buddy before I cut you guys loose. Does he want to say anything uh, before let I let you see. go? Let's see. Let's see if we can get him to go. Oh, here he is. Hey, Bach. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
There's my buddy. <laughs> give Bacher a nice, I think that's all he has to say. Give Bacher a nice scratch behind the ears for me, Marie. I, I miss will, him. Definitely. I miss you. Hopefully I'll see you at an event soon. Very good. Thanks so much, Greg. We really appreciate it. Thank you for joining and us, Marie. you do. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Marie. You. you and Bacher are the best. Take care. Take care. Bye. All right. Let's take a quick break. When it's a dog's life returns, I'm going to turn to the phones. I'm going to help you out with your doggy dilemmas. We'll be taking your phone calls. Pick up the phone and give us a call now, 866-675-6675. If you have a question about your dog's behavior, if you need some training advice, I'm going to keep the phone lines open for the remainder of the show. It's a dog's life on Martha Stewart Living Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 110. We'll return in just a few minutes. (laughs) 